Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. As we come together, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Stand, if you will, on your feet. He is worthy to be praised. We bless the name of him from whom all blessings flow. For he is worthy to be praised. Woke us up, kept us alive, strengthened us on every hand. He is worthy to be praised. Kept us out of destruction and injury and accidents. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun, somebody will catch what I'm saying. After the going down of the sand. He is worthy to be praised. I need some volume. He is worthy to be praised. He has brought us even when we thought we were the ones doing it. He has given health and strength even when we thought it was our diet and our life. The Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Oh, somebody in here who woke up this morning and had thanks in their hearts and ought to just tell us thank you this morning. You know, it could have gone the other way, but he has been so good to us all. And he has kept us. He has never left us. Do I have any witnesses in this house today? Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If today for the last day, you know you were going to be alive in worship. I wonder what would that look like? I wonder what would that shout like? Surely the Lord is good. I'm going to keep saying it until somebody catch what I'm saying. I know you have to be six children in here. I may say it. That the Lord has been good to me. You are more to yourself. And say the Lord has been good to me. And even if you are watching from the other side of that camera, you can point to yourself. And you can look up and see a roof over your head. You've got a lot to say thank you for. And you are sitting for help in your body. If you are standing and you ain't using something else extra, you got a whole lot to praise him for. If you can even see you with the glasses on, you got a whole lot to be proud and thank God for. Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 He is good. I want somebody to holler back at me. He is good. And he is worthy to be praised. Why don't you turn to somebody on your wall in front of you behind you and tell them, the Lord is good to me.
Keep on praying. Just keep on praying. I tell you, the Lord is good. Keep right on praying. Just keep on praying. He'll hear your cry. He'll hear your cry. The Lord. Let us 
pray. Lord, again, we say thank you, Lord, for another day of tenderness, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, for the beginning of a new day, a new week you have allowed us to be a part of, Lord. Some yesterday that was here last week is no longer here this week. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for being so good to each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine, Lord. We thank you for the rain. Lord, we even thank you for the heat wave that we've been having, Lord, because it all comes from you, and we, you are in control. Lord, we thank you for this waiting congregation to hear a word from you, Lord. Lord, we don't want to just hear that word. We want to take that word out into this world and share that word, Lord. Lord, we pray for our pastor, Lord, to continue to bless him and keep him, strengthen him where he's weak, heal his body, Lord. Lord, we also give him some help, Lord, in his ministerial alliance, Lord. Give him some help, Lord, because he does so much, Lord. We just need to give him some help. Lord, we pray for Sister Tracy for being right there with him, Lord. Lord, we pray for his family, his children, his grandchildren, Lord. We pray for the seniors of the Friendship Baptist Church. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to just continue to provide for them, continue to heal their bodies, Lord, keep their minds, Lord, we pray. We pray for the other congregation, Lord, the sick and the shut-ins, Lord, the children, the grandchildren, we pray for the ones away in college, Lord, the ones who, who just graduated from college, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to protect them and give them what they need. Provide for them, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for, for just this, this country, this world. We pray for the, the Lord for rain, Lord. Lord, we pray for our government. Lord, we pray for these laws that they are debating on and signing, Lord. Lord, we pray that they won't be for their political gain, Lord, but they will be for the help of this country, Lord. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. This is overturning the abortion law, Lord. Lord, these women need you, Lord. Lord, whatever they need, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to provide. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for the drugs and the the people who are mental capacities, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to put us control over these drugs. People dying of OD, Lord. Lord, we just say thank you. This world is in a mess for us, Lord. But we know that you can fix it. Lord, you can fix anything, Lord. All things can be done with you, Lord. There's nothing that is impossible for you, Lord. Lord, we just got to keep the faith and we got to keep praying, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for the absent members of our church body, Lord, that they will return, Lord. Lord, we know that this pandemic has been going on for over two years, Lord, and it's just an excuse for many of them to stay home. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to put in their mind and their hearts to return to the church. Lord, there's so much they're missing, so much that they can help do. Lord, we were here to be servants not to be participants of getting stuff. We are to be here to help. Lord, we ask you, Lord, we don't want the talents that you gave us, Lord, to be in vain, that we don't use them. Lord, we thank you for everything you have done for us. Lord, we ask you, Lord, just continue to bless and keep us. Strengthen us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Let us become more and more like Jesus, Lord. We need to love more, Lord. We need to love one another, not just our family, not just our friends. We need to love the stranger that we meet on the street, Lord, because we need to show them that Jesus is love. If we proclaim to be Christians, Lord, we have to show people that we are a Christian. We can't just tell them. They have to see it, Lord. Lord, we say thank you, Lord, for another day. Lord, we pray that you will just continue to bless us and pray that we all get home safely. And tonight, give us a good night's rest and wake us up with your on our mind, Lord. Again, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To have mercy on our souls, Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
see your pain. Out in the dark, out in the rain. Feel so alone, feel so afraid. I heard you pray in Jesus' name. It may be midnight. Thank you. 
like to reference of the city of North Island. You know, for preparation this morning, we know help is on the way, oh, yes. help is here, yeah. and we know because there is nobody like him, nobody heals like him, nobody delivers like him, nobody saves like him, nobody sustains like him. We'll sing the hymn of preparation, the first, the second, and even the third, and then we will sing the refrain.
not only hear from him, but to heed to him. Thank you, Father, for grace and greatness that is thine and thine alone. Giving us another chance to gather that we may collectively as well as individually hear your word, to live out your expectations in our lives individually as well as to be the church you have called us to be in your word from a unified front. Lord, I pray even now for those who are unsaved, who will listen, who will watch, who will hear your word today. I pray for those that are absent in their membership and need a church home and they need to run to you. I pray for those that are unsaved yes, that need to run to the cross and ask, what must I do to be saved? Speak so loud we can't do nothing but hear what you say. And after hearing, help us to hear. We pray that you would use your word as a vehicle of enlightenment and understanding. Thanking you for the riches that are in it. For we ask it all in the authority of your sovereign, saving Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 While we're standing, turn with me again, if you will, to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. This is the third part of this three-part message out of this powerful passage. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, preaching text is actually verse number 14, but we need, we need to walk into the text, starting at verse number 11. And when you find it, would you say amen? amen? I'll be reading out of the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Then Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's palace and successfully completed all that he had planted, planned on doing in the house of the Lord and in his palace. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens that there is no rain, or if I yes, sir. command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. You may be seated before the face of the Father today. Again, we want to look from the latter part connected back to the first part of this 14th verse. A call to humility prayer, turning, and seeking the Lord. A call to humility, prayer, turning, and seeking the Lord. The context of this verse is anchored in historically what we if we were to go back to the very first verse of this pivotal chapter, the dedication of the temple has taken place under Solomon, who is reigning as king. Though his father David wanted to build the temple, God wouldn't let David build the temple with blood on his hands. He allowed Solomon to build the temple. God has just finished demonstrating his acceptance of the new house of worship by sending fire down from heaven to consume the sacrifice which was upon the altar. 
He filled the temple with his great glory, and for several days, the people worshiped him with praise, humility, and sacrifice. And yet when the sacrificing and the celebrating was over, God in the nighttime comes to speak to Solomon, as we've just seen, starting in verse 12, that actually carries through verse 22. God tells Solomon that he will bless Israel on his terms. And he uses two letters, I if. Mm -hmm. If. Mm -hmm. If they will honor him. Yeah, yeah. But if they refuse, let them know under no uncertain terms that there are going to be some serious consequences that they're going to suffer. <clears throat> However, our text promises them that God is going to hear them, watch this, he'll hear them, he will heal them if they will return to him in humble repentance. And this great promise of Israel has a great message even for us today. There are many Bible scholars who say from a historical perspective that the text is entrenched with the promise for Israel. It was primarily written for the people of God then. All right. I believe, though I have no biblical support to say parenthetically that it's going to happen for us, but I, I do believe that if we do right by him, that God will, will help us. Yes, yes. It, it's amazing when you look at this that God gives four prerequisites or four first things first requirements for the nation to do. He doesn't say, I'll bless you and then I'm going to wait on you to do what I want. No. That's not the way it works. God says, your blessings are tied to your obedience. Doesn't that sound like a New Testament fact today? We cannot, nor should we, expect God to bless us when we live under disobedience. I, I, I just believe that, that he helps us and he helps them to see. And he says it not to Solomon alone, but he gives the message to Solomon to give to the people. Yeah. The preacher gets the message from God to give to the people. Amen. That here is what the, thus says the Lord. Right. And I believe that if God says it, God is going to do it. Yes. I believe that if God promises it, God's going to provide it and perform it. Amen. He says to his own people, listen to this. He's not talking to the Chaldeans. He's not talking to the Jebusites or the Midianites. He is talking to his own. He's not talking to the Canaanites. You got to capture what I'm saying. And you would think, this long, they've been with the Lord. This long, they, they look, look y'all. They, they have gone through the Red Sea in their history. They have had bread come down out the sky. They've seen water come out of the rock. And when they were crossing over the Jordan, and when the ford, when it would swell, when there would be an overflooding at a certain time of the year, God allowed a similar path to be created like he did at the Red Sea yeah. so that they would walk through and they were responsible for leaving some stones. And somebody asked, well, what do these stones of remembrance mean? And Joshua said, when somebody comes past this way, then they will look at these stones and know that God brought us through, God brought us over, and we were able to make it. Y'all ain't got still ain't catching what I'm saying here, y'all just waking up. I believe it's important that we understand and capture why would God, of all the people, uh, and y'all walking with me, why would God have to tell his own folk to be humble? Why would God have to tell his own people to pray? Why would God have to tell his own people to seek his face and turn from their wicked ways? Because they were doing everything opposite to what he is telling them to go back and do just like we are opposite and doing everything he told us to do. Notice that the condition and the promises are given to God's people. 
These four commands are non-negotiable. They're not alternatives. They're not options. Watch the text. Because God has made it clear that before he will send the help and the healing, the nation needs to do these things, not every now and then, not treat them like a building's on fire, get the extinguisher, put it out, and then shelve it until the next time. No, God is calling them to do this consistently. They need to be part of their daily life and not to be treated as some kind of add-on when the entire nation repented. God says to the nation, are y'all catching this? Not to a small group of folk, not to a small faction of people, but to everybody, you are required to do these things. And it needs to be done from a unified, collective, cohesive front. Think about this. Aren't we long overdue as a nation here in the good old USA yes, to return to prayer? We sure are. Amen. Yeah. Yes, A lot of folks just do crises praying. Get sick, got to start praying. Yeah. Lost a job, I guess I need to go back to church. Yeah. Uh, trouble in my family, uh, stuff going on, people driving, they're crazy. I guess it's time to pray. You should have been praying before all this stuff showed up anyhow. Yeah. Yes. We are long overdue as a nation to turn from our wicked ways. All you got to do is look at that decision that was made a few days ago about Roe versus Wade. All you got to do is look at gun reform and gun control. Wow, 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 thank you for helping me. And then we are long overdue when it comes to seeking God's face. Because in America, we've got we got a God problem. Because some folks are talking about they know it when all they know is name, they know how to spell it. But they don't have a relationship. We're long overdue. And please understand, we can't receive the kind of healing that our land needs that God and only God can give us unless it's the quality of consistent praying and turning from and turning to that pleases God. We're coming to God asking for help. Then God has every right to decide. If you want my help, this is what it's going to take. If you rather borrow a car, uh, I'm sorry, if you ever had to go get a loan for a house or a car, you signed what was known as loan papers or a contract. And in that contract, it was made very clear what the APR, the annual percentage rate is going to be, how long the term of the loan is going to be, what the monthly payment is going to be, and they also let you know if you don't pay, they're going to come get it. I wonder if anybody walked in with me. Yeah, yeah, understand, we can't receive what God has any kind of way without doing it God's way. The kind of prayer that would reclaim lives and families and restore a nation back to God must take first place in our lives. And watch this, it ought to begin, if we're, gonna, if we're going to move the calendar up, we aren't talking about the nation of Israel now, we're talking about the church. Yeah. If there's any group of people Wake up, y'all. It ain't that boring. If there's any group of people who have been fortunate to have prayers answered and know what? The God who answers prayer, not just the words that you say, but he who takes your words and wrap his power around him and we get the need to have. I don't understand why you won't come to prayer me. We want God to help us to, to clean up the streets, we want God to do a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And God says, wait a minute. I'm not your cosmic bellhop. Mm. You want deliverance? I dare you to gather and show me on a regular basis that you are serious about what you're talking about you need. And then I will. Oh, y'all missing the text. Because I'm right in it. Because understand, we know, we, we, we don't pacify God. We don't push God. This ain't a name it, claim it, grab it, grab it. This ain't a matter of in Jesus' name. Oh, oh. No, you need to humble yourself. You need to turn from your wicked ways. You need to pray and you need to seek my face. You don't get to do one or two or three and leave one mama. They ain't about leaving any of them all. It's all or none. 
I thought he had some children in there. Do we want the Lord to answer us when we call on him? Do we want God to answer when we call on him on the behalf of our communities? And just maybe here's a good place to ask this question. Do we want God's guidance? Do we want God's protection? And if you said yes, then we're going to have to do the if that comes before the then. Let me say it one more time. You don't get the then without doing the if. The if is that which comes after or before the then. Well, ain't no getting around it. Because it hinges on that. And so while this promise was first and foremost directed specifically and intentionally to Israel, the hope that we have when we come to this verse is that God will help us in these turbulent, trying, and treacherous times. And so while America is not the nation this promise is directed toward, the blessing is, thank God, that there are some Christians in America that do pray. Yes. Thank God that there is a righteous remnant that deal, that will trust God and stand on his I thought some of them up in here this morning. Yeah. You ought not be ashamed to open your mouth and raise your hand. Yeah. And when you're talking about a righteous remnant, you ought to be saying, yeah, preacher, you're talking about me. Say it. Oh, okay. Say it. So I, I, I should not have to solicit and ask you to be a mouthpiece and a witness when you know firsthand for your own self. Oh, okay, here it is. Here we go. Let me try it. And that's all right. It's all good. Because all of us in this room have had somebody who prayed for us. Yeah. And some of us in this room are praying for somebody else. Praying for children. Praying for family. Praying for health situations. There are four things. Let me hurry. There are four things God says the people must do. Here they are. Humble themselves. Which is the most important element in prayer is humility. Understand that effective prayer requires us to abandon our pride and to acknowledge our dependence on the Almighty God. If you are that self-sustaining, if you can do it all by yourself, you don't need to pray. And if you're running it like you think you're running it, if you believe your money is doing it all for you, if you think your education is doing it all for you, you don't need God. You don't need to pray. But even with education, you ain't, out, you ain't smart enough to outsmart some stuff. I've seen some folk with so much education getting some dumb trouble. God help me preach your word today. Uh, I understand, there are some things you might be well, doing well, driving well, eating well, living well, but understand one thing, trouble knows your address, sickness knows where you live, and when it shows up, it, it doesn't care about your beauty, rest, mattress, it doesn't care about how much money you pay for your house, or how well you drive, or how fly you dress. Oh, somebody ought to talk to me, because that is a day coming. When your money will mean nothing when it comes to shitness that will show up in your family or even or you say, I'm doing all right now, just right now. But did you not know in 10 minutes you can have an aneurysm? In 5 minutes you can have a heart attack? In 5 minutes you can be paralyzed from the neck now? And somebody will need to care for you or feed you. I'm, come on in here and talk to me. But praise God for the right now, that I can raise my hand, that I'm not paralyzed, that I can stay, I may not be able to stand all day, but I can at least get up and I can stand up. I can clap my hands because I don't know what the next hour is going to bring. If you want to breathe. Thank you. I said this morning in Sunday school, I find it in show how some saints can be ever so full of demeanor and erudite and astute. That means that this will reserve the church. Preacher, I don't, I don't need to do all that. Oh, but get them, 
Get, get your favorite team on TV. Uh, you see, I, you know, it's all right there. And then, let it get down to certain seconds in the game. And the team is driving. And they need a field goal to win. And there ain't much time on the clock left. And here they line up and they're sitting on the edge of, the, of their chair, their couch or whatever. And they, please, come on, you know, you, you got to kick this field goal in order to make it. And then when the field goal is kicked and it goes through the uprights, and the referee does this, you ain't got to ask him, do you mind if you cheer now? You don't have to, you don't have to ask them, do you mind celebrating? No, they're jumping up and down, hollering and screaming. Oh, come here, come here. When you just went through what you just went through and you're still here to talk and tell about it, how the world can you be so quiet? When you think about what God has done for you all week long, let me run it to you again. Kept you off the court on this table. Kept you out of accident. Kept you out of injury. Kept you out of illness. Still being killed. 
people are still being shocked. <laughs> and then third, let me move it. He says, seek his face. And to seek God's face is another way of saying obtain his favor. Israel is required in seeking his face, which also suggests that they need to return back to him and not just show up when they feel like it, but to go back to him and to please him. And we must diligently search for God in all of our hearts and minds. And this searching is not a looking for God as much as it is a call that says, since you already know him, then you know what he wants, you know what he desires, you ought to give it to him. Then turn from their wicked ways. Just reach out. A nation who removes God from the public places has already removed God from the private places. Every time God has been dismissed from a nation, hear me when I tell you, that nation has disintegrated. It has crumbled. And you need to know that our, our country, our county, our state is dying. And his call to the nation to repent. His call to Warren, Ohio to repent. His call to the state of Ohio to repent. His call for America to repent. Not only must they acknowledge that we are sinners and turn from our evil thoughts and wicked ways, because if it's the constant and the cry of the prophets of the Old Testament was for the people to turn and return to the Lord, it's a cry that still needs to be made in our land today. Yes, yes. But then on the flip side of it, yes, give me 10 more minutes and I'll be out your way. There are three things God pre-promises that he's going to do. You know, Deacon McMillan, when I read the Bible, and when God makes a promise, nobody has to remind him. <laughs> Come here, Elijah. I need some help. Went to Jezebel and Ahab and said, Thus said the Lord, it will not rain for three years and six months. And at the right time, on the right day, not a second late. God says to the prophet who he gave the message to three years and six months before, get ready because I'm getting ready to send some rain. And Elijah never had to remind God in any prayer or episode. Now, Lord, you know what you said, that you was going to send rain. Oh, uh -uh, you and I don't have to remind God about nothing. God doesn't forgive anything. If God knows how many hairs that are on your head, If he will feed, feed the sparrow, won't he take care of you? If he knows how many stars there are in the galaxies, in the cosmic system, in the Milky Way, there are billions of them. And the word says he knows them all by name. If he knows what every snowflake falls, because he chisels them geometrically, that they never look the same. If he wanted to, he could call all so Noah, each one of landed in rain this morning, and God knew where the first raindrop fell and where the last one fell. And if he wanted to call them to himself, he could do that right now. You tell me how great is your God. If he can do that with the raindrop, if he can do that with the snowflake, what will he not do for those who will look right in his sight? Says, and here it is. While you're taking notes, write this down. Then come the blessings. Oh, yes. How much time we got? Thank you so much. Three affirmative facts on then come the blessings. You want me to tell you about them? Yes. Number one, he says. I will hear from him. Oh, I wish I could say. Oh, my God. I'm going to need 
some reserved hollers in the house for me. Thank you so much. Somebody already started. I will hear from you now. Let's explore that. Because I raised two questions. What, is, what does that mean? And what does that response look like? Well, simply stated, God says that they will hear from me. Now, he did say, you're going to hear from me in a negative way if you don't do what I say. But then he says, here, you will hear from me in a positive way. Can I tell you, the worst person who sighed to get on his heels? Oh, yeah. Beloved, all of these responses from God are connected to the people of God. The heart of God, they come in alignment with his word. Let me hurry here. God promises his people, listen to this, that there will be conversation between them and him again. Can I tell you today, if there's anybody who has stopped talking, it may not be him, it may be us. God promises his people that we can talk again. I not only want to hear from you, but I want you to hear from me. That he is going to listen to this. Bend his ear low to hear the cries of his people yeah. one more time. Yeah. And I will where you stand, but I need him to hear me. Yes, Lord. At night when I lay down. Lord, you've been good to me all day long. I thought I had somebody who wouldn't mind joining me right now. You kept me out of hurt, harm, and danger. That, I just kind of remember what how my grandmother them used to pray. You, you ordered my steps all day long. You kept me from falling and breaking bones. Thank you, Father. But you didn't let my, 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 my sheep become my wine and sheep. And you didn't let my matches become my cooling boy. That's a little too old for some of y'all to capture. Lord, Lord, thank you that tonight I'm going to lay down. Uh, and, 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 and I'm going to need you to please send me at least one angel to pinch me breath by breath to watch over me all night long. Yeah. Lord, don't let the house blow up or burn up or be broken in while I'm here. You've been taking care of me this long. And I'm going to lean on you to help me to lay down when I got trouble, but you told me to cast my cares on you. Ain't going to need both of us stand up. Thank you, God, that you don't need to take some of this. You're going to be up all night long. And I, and, I, and I learned from you. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I've learned that there have been some moments in my life where I've had some trouble and trial and tribulation that was wearing down in the daytime. But at night, I've learned that God is, has, he wears a one-size fit off. And that no matter what it is, no matter what's going on, I thought he had some children in here. No matter what you are dealing with, no matter what you are facing, somebody here can say, I turned it over to Jesus and it worked it out for me. You ought to learn how to give him praise and honor and glory. When you hear something that's got your name on it, I wonder if there's anybody who have ever had to lean on him. Who have ever had to trust him? Oh, yes. Thank God today. To hear from heaven is another way of saying that Israel is going to hear from him. But then, second, here's another blessing that comes. He will forgive their sins. You can't take that lightly. So we ask the question again what does that mean? And what does that response look like? Simply stated, God says that I'm going to wipe slate all of your mess ups and all of your sins. Forgiveness from the standpoint means that it removes our sin, watch this, but it also restores our fellowship with the Father. Psalms 103, verse 12, write it down and I will repeat it for you. For as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. The average person, brother, trying to, when they read that, they got no idea what that means. So let me show it to you so that you get a visual and an appreciation of it. Where he says, as far as the east is from the west, that he has, brother David, removed our transgressions from us. 
as you watch both of my hands, they're not running into each other. They are moving away from each other. I thank God today that my sins of yesterday and last week and last month and last year, that when I ask them to forgive me, that he ain't hanging them over my head, he has sent them over a place where they never show up again. God is not the one that's reminding me of my stuff. I'm reminding myself of my stuff. And you know some folks that act like they ain't never done nothing wrong reminding you of their stuff. But you need to keep in mind that it doesn't matter who talk about you. It's he who talks to you. And if God says, I've forgiven you, hold your head up. If God says that you're all right with me, it doesn't matter who ain't talking to you. God says, I'm going to sing to you. So far away from one another. Can I help you with something? Quit trying to go get the east and the west and make them live again. If God has sent your sin in another direction, you ought to live with the freedom. You ought to live with the forgiveness that God has forgiven you. I wish I had some folks who got messed up, who ain't got no problem helping me preach right there. Yes, I messed up. Yes, I done so wrong. But I thank God for the other side. You can let them say whatever they want to say. I'll remember when. Okay, fine. You stay with it. But I thank God that my being ain't a nap. Hallelujah. Kind of almost reminds me. On that forgiveness piece, can I tell you, man, who had a Rolls Royce was driving through a particular area one day. And you know, Rolls Royces are expensive vehicles. Yeah. Car broke down. I'm trying to hurry so I don't bore you. And Rolls Royce sent somebody, sent a mechanic out in order to fix it. The man went back home and been waiting for weeks and days and months showed up. Never got a bill, never heard from Rolls Royce again. So he called John Cohen. He called the factory. And he says, on this particular day, I had my car to break down in this particular place. Thank you for sending some help my way. He said, but I've been waiting at the mailbox for my bill. And the person on the other end says, can you just hold on and let me just check the record. Went back to him and said, sir, I, I want to report to you that we don't have nothing in our database that shows that you ever had a breakdown and some mechanic ever came to your place. He said, no, I, I know it happened. Sir, I'm trying to tell you that we have no record and we keep no record of such a thing that has happened. And the reason why is because you got great coverage. You still, that's what I'm saying. If you are God's child, you are celebrated. I got great coverage. I didn't say all state, and I didn't say stay far. I didn't say potential. If you got God on your side, guess who's been making the way for you? Guess who's been walking with you? You've got great coverage, and he's a walking cane when you get old. He's a battle axe in the time of trouble. He's a friend when you ain't got one. He's one in shot places. He'll put food on your table. I know God is safe. Do you know that he is? Way. Thank God. Like Israel, he's forgiven not just sins of them, but he's given, forgiven ours as well. But watch the text because the conditions got to be met before he moves. The people have got to move away from their sin and not legitimize them or defend them or make excuses for them. Not only must they get out of them, the command and the expectation is that you get out and you stay out. They must get away from sin, stay away from them. Thank God today. Thank God today for his unspeakable and tremendous love for you and I to forgive our sins. But we need to be clear, beloved. Forgiving us of our sins still holds us responsible for repetitive behavior. The forgiveness of sins carries this expectation. In three words, leave them alone. Get out and stay out. 
and as much pain as God has endured by Israel's disobedience, obstinance, and waywardness. Time after time after time, during the course of their history, God, who is rich in mercy, leaves a door of return open and available to them. Can I tell you? Time after time after time. See, if you ain't done, if you didn't see it yesterday, then you don't need to, you don't need to say nothing. But for all of us that messed up, that asked for forgiveness last night, we celebrate because we're glad that he leaves the door open. And there's probably somebody in your life right now who's still mad at you because of something that they heard. They don't know if it's true, but because somebody told them and somebody who was a dog and brought a bone and carried one and had your name on it. They are now believing some stuff, some mess, some joke, some, some midget-minded, basement-minded stuff about you. But can I tell you, God ain't got to be on a 411. He ain't on a great fire nowhere. God knows our thoughts before us. God knows what we're going to do before we do it. God knows what we're going to go before we get there. And yet he knows even before it comes out of our mouth what's already to come in our mind, but I'm so glad that he makes forgiveness available for us. Y'all still ain't catching what I'm saying. He will forgive our sin. I know that he is the God that leaves the door open. Four times he has said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 3, Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 1, the book of Job chapter 2 and verse 1, Malachi chapter 3 and verse 7, he has said to them over and over and over again, return unto me and I will return unto you. Brother Beck, you're going to help me close it out today. But then the last one, Will heal their name. You ask, what does that? What does that mean? And what does that sound like? Well, simple and far, four, four words. God will heal them. In other words, when we get right with God, when we meet His expectations. He has promised to give us blessing, power, honor, greatness, and heal us. All oh, bless his name. When we find that place before him that honors him, because the reference made in the text to the land, can the scripture have a dual or a twofold meaning? It can mean that God can heal the land Droughts and floods and flies and fires and locusts and storms and insect invasions and many other natural disasters. But then secondly, God is able to heal the people in the land that have become sick in the sin. The land becomes wicked. Because the people in the land becomes that way. The land becomes wayward. Because the people in the land become wayward. Yes, brothers and sisters, following and worshiping idols. Yes, embracing a culture whose practices are against God and so much more. And just as the nation of Israel needed healing, People in our land right now also need healing. And I ain't talking about physical stuff. I'm talking about healing relationally, right with the Lord spiritually. Israel could not heal herself by her own strength. It could not be legislated by governmental authority. They needed not the governor, they needed the Lord. And the same applies to you and me. Thank God for governmental officials. Thank God for the mayor. But he can't do it. Thank God for the governor. But he cannot do it. Thank God for the president. But he can't do it. Y'all ain't walking with me. Well, brothers and sisters, understand 
that they are sin in the land. And it's more and worse now than it ever has been. But there is some good news. I've got at least four more minutes. And I'll be out of your way. There is in the face of killings some good news. In the face of drug overdoses, there is some good news. In the face of traumatic activity, there is some good news. Folks that are afraid to drive their cars and sit in their living rooms, there is some good news. We are, we are facing inflationary moments, there is some good news. And there is, yes, understand, no sin so strong, no person so powerful, and no issue so pitiful that our God cannot save us from. Did you hear what God said? That God will do. He didn't leave it up to the people. God says that I can handle it. God says I can deliver you. Yes, Lord. I wish the people of God in this house today would have an excitement that no matter where you find yourself, there is a God that sits on the throne. He moves. Just a little bit of that. He super rules. He speaks and we will live. He speaks and we will die. He walks on water like we walk on concrete. He takes two fish and five bowls of bread and feeds five thousand. Our God is a great God. He can do anything but fail. All you got to do is look at your own life. And he all right. All you got to do is look at your own history. And you can raise your hand and say, what a wonderful God that we serve. Who else but him can raise a crowd down here? Who else but him can heal the land? Who else but him can forgive our sin? Who else but him am I right about it that can make a way out of no way? I made up in my mind that I'm going to stick with him who's got all power in his head. I made up in my mind I'm going to praise him. He is worthy to be praised. Don't know what Israel is going to do. But I believe the people of friendship can raise their hand and say, Our God is a deliverer. Our God is a sin bearer. Our God is a way out of no way. Bless his name. I will heal the land. But can I add some more to it? I will. Lay you down at night and get your burden in the morning. I will fall in your steps. I will be a miracle worker for you. I will open doors that are closed against you. I will give you help and strength. I will be your friend. I will speak peace to your soul. Lift you up every time you fall. I will speak peace to your mind. I will, yes, I will. I give health. I give strength to your weak body. I will keep the lights on for you. I will give shouting in your steps. I will keep bread on your table. Do everything that you need me to do. Is there anybody here? Do you love him? Can I hear you say yes? Thank you, Lord, for being a way maker. Thank 
Is there one? 